Okay, now I can talk. Good morning, good morning. We want to welcome you, those who are joining us in the Zoom Tea Room and on Facebook, the Girlfriends Tea. I want to recognize our co-host, the beautiful Tamika, Tamika Watts. There we are. And I also want to thank our sponsor, our supporting sponsor for today, Monica Barnes, Leader and Independent Senior Sales Director with Mary Kay Incorporated. Good morning and thank you so much for your support, Wanda. Oh, Monica, thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to introduce now our guest with us, Regina. And I'll let you start your video. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. We're so happy to see you with us. Happy to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's, we're just awesome and excited about you being here for this very important discussion. But first, I want to say thank you for joining me for a cup of tea. And I'm happy to see that you have your beverage and you are ready. Okay, without further ado, as director of Spectrum Puppets, you have been producing, directing, and designing world-class puppets for 40 years with a performance history that includes appearances on the Today Show and the Tonight Show. A master puppeteer, you spread smiles and joy through a myriad of entertainment venues, from small puppet shows and festivals, fundraisers, and even full-scale musical extravaganzas and grand events. You're also the owner of Spectrum Puppets. Your organization, Stop Abuse, was formed in 1986. Regina, tell us about how you started. Well, um, I actually am a New Yorker, if you can't tell my accent. And uh, I went to Brooklyn College and I took, a I, I took uh, commercial art and marketing. And then I took a course in puppet theater and we had to build one puppet. Well, being as I am, I made nine puppets. I wrote a script, I built the stage and I started touring. When we got down into uh, Virginia Beach, when we moved here, I got into marionettes, which I love because you can move the whole body. And um, I've built over 300 fabulous marionettes all kinds of shows from undersea creatures to let's get buggy rhythm and strings uh very diverse puppets i like to celebrate different cultures and then about 32 years ago i started my stop abuse organization it's a non-profit and i built a musical marionette show award-winning that teaches young children how to recognize prevent and disclose sexual abuse so we go into schools and youth centers. Outstanding. Well, I love your jewelry. So you also, speaking of that, you also make your own jewelry to support your cause to stop abuse. So share with us about your jewelry. Okay, so I'm in my, I'm in my fun room right now at my studio at home. And uh, I make all kinds of really fabulous jewelry. Everything from pearls and... Uh, to uh, turquoise and uh, coral, all gemstones, really fabulous stuff. And all the money that I make, all the proceeds go back to child abuse prevention. So, and I'm, I also do oil paintings. So all of those things that I make, uh, they all get sold and all the money goes to saving a child. Outstanding. And then that's someone who has a passion for what she does and we're happy to have you here to educate us but you know regina most of us feel that we know what child sexual abuse is because you please define it for us anytime that a child is touched in an inappropriate way um i like to say that the parts of your body that are covered by your bathing suit are yours and nobody has the right to touch them of course if mom and dad give you you know, a bath, or if you go to the dentist and the dentist touches your mouth, those are okay. But um, yeah, any touching or, or worse than that, I mean, anything like that is considered sexual abuse. And it's really, you know, the, the facts are staggering. You know, one in three girls will be 
uh, sexually abused before the age of 18, one in five boys, one in five children are solicited sexually while on the internet. And uh, I would say that 90% of the of children know who their child molester is. It's usually a family member or friend or someone they trust. And very little gets reported. You know, 30% uh, or more of sexual abuse is never reported. So it's a difficult topic. I can, I, as we all know, but it, I know it also includes exhibitionism and, you know, exposure to pornography, voyeurism, et cetera. And it is a crime punishable by law, which we'll speak about later. Your troop tours elementary schools and youth centers throughout the United States and Canada with your Emmy Award winning child abuse prevention program, Simon Says Just Tell. That's right. We're going to hold up, Simon. I have my assignment too. He is adorable. And you know everyone, what? I've had him since 2014 and I still have the tag on him. The kids love Simon. And uh, when, I, when, I first, when I first built the show, um, I did a lot of research. I spoke to a lot of pedophiles that were in prison, doctors, lawyers, clergy. Um, I, I spoke to hundreds of people over two years. And then I went to a, a group called Parents United. It's kind of like AA for uh, alcoholics. And there were about 40 men there and then they put them into groups. I got to go into a group with seven men and one of them said that he abused his nine-year-old but not his seven-year-old. And I said, why didn't you abuse the seven-year-old? And he said, she has a big mouth and she would tell. So the light bulb went off in my head and I knew that moment, I think I probably wrote my whole script within 10 seconds after that, I knew that I had to give children a voice. And Simon, Simon is the children's voice. I made him green because I didn't want him to be, you know, any specific uh, race. Um, he has goggles so he can see into the hearts of children. His antenna tune him into children that need help. And kids love him. They just love him. They sleep with him. They talk to him. And I think that he is, you know, the, the world's mascot to save children from sexual abuse. Yes, yes. And, you know, I must be a child at heart because I love him, too, since I've had him since 2014. And, Regine, I wasn't aware, but you do still sell these. So parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles, they can give Simon as they explain to them about child sexual abuse, correct? Correct. And it's amazing how once children know who Simon is, they really feel comfortable with him. Even adults have him on their nightstand or in their office. But yeah, Simon has a huge, huge following. And in the show, it's a, it's a beautiful marionette show. The puppets are awesome. It's a huge, huge stage. Um, we, have, uh, we have nine characters, and uh, Lori and Doug are the two children in the show. Lori gets into trouble with mom's boyfriend. He wants to marry her. And uh, Simon comes into the picture and tells her how to deal with the situation. So he tells her to write a letter to mom. And of course, mom reads the letter and we have a really positive ending. And there's also wonderful songs in the show. And the one song, This Is My Body, like we were at Camp Estello Elementary in Norfolk, there were 800 children. And Simon asked the kids to sing along. There were like 800 kids singing, this is my body, that is your body. The windows were shaking and, you know, my puppeteers and I were up on the marionette bridge and we're going, yes. So they get it. They understand it. They get involved from the very first minute to the very end. Um, they're silent. They're listening. They want to know what happens to Lori. And uh, it's, it's a beautiful show. We've won Emmys. We've won all kinds of awards for it. So it works. You know, when you shared about how somebody said, because the, the gentleman said, because they would tell, I love how you use Simon Says, because we've all played Simon Says. Simon right. says do this, Simon says do that. And so we recognize with that, and the kids resonate with that because they know Simon Says. Right. And Simon Says, just tell. So that is so powerful. And he's your main character, as you stated, in the show, and has become a global symbol for children's rights. 
having right. performed for more than 1 million children nationwide. So congratulations to you and all that you're doing in impacting children. In Thank addition you. to raising awareness and encouraging children to speak up, how else has Stop Abuse, um, how else is Stop Abuse evolved in the fight? Well, I mean, it's mainly the marionette show. Um, and, and I want to mention that thousands, thousands of kids have prevented abuse. I walk into a, uh, into a restaurant and, and the waitress says, oh, I saw your show when I was in second grade and Simon saved my life. Um, we've also helped put over 200 child molesters in prison just in the Hampton Roads area that we know of. And then I thought the, the perfect progression from the show would be to, to, uh, to write a book. So I wrote a book, Simon Says Play It Safe. And this is a full color children's book that gives parents the language to talk to their children about sensitive and safety issues. And more than anything, I think it's important for parents to have the conversation to talk to their children, to believe what their children are saying, and to notice what the signs are. If your child is not acting like it normally would, you know, uh, sluggish, sick, you notice just their grades are going down. There are so many signs, and you can go online and, you know, go to the facts and stats. Uh, but so, that, so that's my book. And now, of course, because of the coronavirus, we're not able to bring our show into the schools for the foreseeable future. So what I'm doing is I'm raising funds to buy thousands of my books and Simon dolls so that we can get the book and Simon dolls to as many children as possible. So that's my goal right now. And we're producing some virtual videos, you know, with short but very important messages that are both entertaining for the children and educational for the parents. Absolutely. And I did post for those who are members of Girlfriends Tea, and I'm going to post it on my, I think I did post it on my personal public page, but I'm going to make sure I post again how we can support Regina in purchasing a book. A donation of, a donation of $20 will cover a book. Of course, you're welcome to give more. You're encouraged to give more. As we know, so many nonprofits have been impacted as a result of COVID-19 because people aren't working, businesses aren't op open. So priorities are different, but we know that your organization will thrive. Two things I wanna mention also that anytime we do a show, you know, whether it's at a youth center, at a church, um, at, a, at a school, wherever we are, we always have somebody from Child Protective Services and or the police department with us so that if a child comes forward, they're immediately evaluated and referred. Uh, and then what, what scares me right now, I'm so worried about the many, many children that are sequestered at home with their abuser. Because Absolutely. We know that most of the abuse happens at home. Absolutely. And that leads, that's a segue to my next uh, comment and question. You shared an article with me that shocked me and it was from Wavy and it read, while most of the world is still immensely concerned about COVID-19, there is another pandemic that has emerged, child abuse. The article dated in May states, reports of abuse are way down in the Commonwealth since Virginia started sheltering in place. The Department of Social Services has seen a, seen a decrease of more than 90% in daily referrals for child abuse. At the same time, a national sex abuse hotline is seeing an all-time high of children logging on to its site. So since children are not in school, the teachers and staff are no longer the recipients of their cries for help. Hence, they're calling the national hotline. How are you staying abreast of that? Or are you involved with anyone keeping you abreast of that? Well, that's the whole idea is that we want to get these books and the Simon dolls to as many families and as many children as we can, because hopefully by reading the book together, you're starting a dialogue with your family. And to me, uh, child molesters will not mess with you if you give a loud and resounding no. So, uh, so that's, that's what I hope this book and Simon is going to help these kids do. I'm, I'm very, I'm very concerned about it. And, you know, I'm, I'm a victim 
of sexual abuse myself. I don't want to say I'm a victim. I'm a thriver. I'm a survivor. But it happened to me when I was very young and it was horrible. I was kidnapped. I was kept hostage for 10 days. I was severely sexually molested and I was actually left for dead. So the, it's by God's grace that I'm here. And I just decided that I need to, you know, that my, my place on earth is to save other children from that happening to them. So, you know, we want to give kids a voice. That's who Simon is. He's the children's voice, that intuition. Well, you are indeed a thriver. And Regina, if you could share more, because I used to be on a board at the Hearst Shelter for domestic violence. So also during this period, domestic violence is on rise because the victim, whether it's female or male, we know it's mostly females, they're sequestered with the, the, the accuser or the harasser. But share with us about how when you did share years ago about your testimony of being a victim and how it opened up doors for you to help women, not children, but other adults who have been sexually abused. Well, um, I didn't say anything for a very, very long time. And the ramifications that come along with being sexual abuse are so vast I don't think people realize it's a life sentence because you never get over it. You have to learn how to live with it. So about three, four years ago, Fox News came down here and did a, a story on me for their Beyond the Dream segment. So he got me to say on national TV that I had been a victim of sexual abuse. And after that aired, everywhere I went, it, and, the store, um, anywhere, people would stop me. I had over 300 emails like within the, within the first 42 hours, uh, 48 hours. And then I was asked to be a speaker, um, a keynote speaker at a national convention in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, so we took our show up there to show the actual marionette show. And there were about 1500 people in the audience and something inside me said, I need to tell my story. So I got really, really scared. I thought I was going to wet myself. And then I decided, you know, I need to do this. So I did tell my story for the first time to a very large audience. And then afterwards, uh, there were probably 100 people waiting for me in the, in the hallway. And I stayed an extra four and a half hours. And I spoke to every single person and girlfriend. 80% of those women had never told a soul. I was the first one that they told. So now, anytime that I do speaking engagements, I make sure that I know where I'm going and that I get all the resources that I need so that if from that area so that if somebody does come to talk to me, I can hand them a card and say, here's who you need to talk to, here's what you need to do. I'm working right now with uh, a young woman who uh, came to me through a friend of mine and she's 19 years old. She was sexually abused from age eight till about 11 by her father. And, um, and she has not been able to deal with it. She's in a severe crisis right now. She's, she wants to kill herself. So I've been meeting with her and trying to talk to her sometimes just having another shoulder that understands helps so, um, but I'm getting her the help that she needs. She's going for counseling now. So I have a couple of really good people who I know are wonderful counselors. And uh, so it's not just the children, but I seem to find that uh, adults seek me out and, and I'm able to help in that, in that area too. They're called AMAX, Adults Molested as Children. Yes, and thank you again so much. This is so very important. U.S. Senator Tim Kaine joined with other senators in support of the Emergency Funding for Child Protection Act, legislation that would provide $500 million in emergency funds for local child protective services and $1 million for community-based child abuse prevention programs such as yours. Kaine said, the legislation will strengthen efforts by child protective services and nonprofits to prevent abuse and protect children who are at risk. 
hopefully stop abuse would be a recipient of those funds. But what other avenues of support do you have other than maybe that and some donors? Well, we're certainly hoping to get some of that money, but you know, writing grants is difficult and we're just one of a multitude of nonprofits that are really hurting right now. And uh, unfortunately too, we, we made a lot of our money from events. We put on the best events. Uh, we had a Bollywood event. We, we had an upcoming um, fashion show from the 40s. So, you know, all these, all these events that we had planned, which is where we make most of our money, you know, they were all canceled. So, so that makes it difficult. But ba mainly, we get our money through donors, through uh, writing grants, and putting on events. Well, we'll be prayerful with you in, in the continuance of the work that you're doing. Well, I'm not a parent, but I'm an aunt, and I'm a citizen. I'm a concerned citizen. So parents, guardians, aunts, uncles, all concerned adults should know some parental facts, and I'll share some of them. 90% of children who are victims of sexual abuse know their abuser. So, you know, as I share with you, I'm thinking stranger danger. That's not the case in child sexual abuse. 60% of children who are sexually abused are abused by people the family trusts. 40% of children who are sexually abused are abused by older or more powerful children. 30% of children who are sexually abused are abused by family members. And 10% or less of children who are sexually abused are abused by a stranger. So as I stated, or the facts stated, and you shared those with me, there's no stranger danger. I recall a story, Regina, that I read about child sexual abuse many years ago that alarmed me. Parents had their best friend, husband and wife, and they were riding with their son, and their best friend, the husband's best friend, was in the backseat with their son. And when the son finally opened up and told he shared with them that it started when that friend was in the back seat. He was actually fondling their child while they were driving. So it's just absolutely alarming for me. So I want you to share. I know you said they could tell. Parents must get the information and talk about it. But how else can parents minimize the opportunity? Is it taking some of these precautions? Yeah, and you want to really make sure that your child is never alone with somebody, you know, that's older than them. But, you know, there's also child on child sexual abuse. Um, interestingly, I did uh, the summer safety, spring safety camp at the Great Neck Rec Center. And a mom calls me up later and her older son, who at the time was five, was abused by, sexually abused by his nine-year-old stepbrother. And I was shocked when she told me he... Now the boy is nine and he has a younger brother. And she said, oh my gosh, he told me that Simon said I could tell that when I wrestle with my brother that I get tingly all over and I want to touch his private parts. So that was the first time ever that a child came forward to say that he was the perpetrator. So of course, you know, she has him in therapy, et cetera, et cetera. She said something very interesting that I thought was amazing. She said, you know, everybody thinks it's not, it, this can't happen to my child until it does. And I thought that was rather powerful. And incidentally, I also want to mention that we have our cast of characters are diverse. We have a white cast. We have an African-American cast. We're about to translate the show into Spanish. And, uh, and people can look us up on uh, stop abuse, um, you know, www.stopabuse.com. We're just redoing our website to make more helpful suggestions to parents during this uh, quarantine time. And then also go to our Facebook, our Spectrum Puppets Facebook page. They can see some of our other fun puppets. So I, I like to think, I love the fact that I'm a puppeteer. I love what I do. And I kind of have puppets with a purpose. I love that. And we're going to help you tag that puppets with a purpose. Thank you. That is so, oh, it's so apropos for what you do. But you've already empowered a huge segment of our society to help stop the cycle of sexual abuse. Just in Hampton Roads, this program resulted in the arrest, as you hinted to earlier, and successful prosecution and incarceration 
of more than 200 child molesters, thousands of criminal charges, as well as thousands of cases of prevention have been directly attributed to your program as well. So in working with law enforcement, I know you mentioned that you do, how do you work with them? How do they assist you? Okay, so first of all, on my board, um, I have uh, Colin Stolley, who, who is uh, our Commonwealth attorney, and Anton Bell, the Commonwealth attorney in Hampton. I have a retired police officer who's on our board. I work very closely with law enforcement, with the sheriff's department. Um, Sheriff Ken Stolley is one of our advisors. So it's, it's, I feel like I have a really big responsibility that I can't just go out and show the show and then leave. I have a responsibility that the child needs to be taken care of, the perpetrator needs to be put away. Absolutely. And you know, Regina, it just amazes me that, and I'll, I'll call this the enemy, that the enemy continues to practice the same thing. And, and I spoke to you about that. I don't understand. We know that one of the, one of the tactics is don't tell anyone the secrecy, and it amazes me that that continues, but it's because children are children and their minds are not developed like us. So that's something new to them, you know, to respect adults and to keep a secret. Why do you think children are afraid to talk to their parents? Is it because the parents have not had the talk? I think it's a, it's a lot of things. It's the threat. Uh, you know, the perpetrator will say, I'll kill you, I'll kill your parents. Uh, this is our secret, you know, don't tell anybody. I think a lot of the times the child thinks they're going to get into trouble. Um, it might be the dad who is the provider and he doesn't want anything happen happening to his dad. You know, there's a whole bunch of reasons, but they're scared. They're ashamed, especially if a boy is being sexually molested by a man. He feels more shame even, I guess, than if the girl is being molested. But, you know, was it my fault? I feel guilty, you know, and I had those feelings too. I'm like, what did I do to make that happen? And what happens if I do tell? So you're scared. You're living with fear. You're living with guilt and shame. And it also takes away a lot of your self-worth. It took me years and years to, you know, build up my self-esteem. And I had, I had thoughts of killing myself. They were fleeting, you know, I, I certainly didn't want to leave this world, you know, but you, you think about that because you think, okay, it's all going to be over. So there are so many ramifications and, and, you know, the guilt that you feel. So you don't tell. I, I didn't tell until just a couple of years ago, which is crazy. I felt like I couldn't say anything to anybody. I felt guilty. I felt shame. So it took Fox News to come down here and get it out of me. But yes, yes. That, did, that was my that was the first time that I turned totally free. And if I might tell you a little story, my husband and I have been married for 53 years. He is a saint. And um before we got married, I, I told him what had happened to me. When this news piece came out, the the uh the reporter said, Well, it's probably not gonna air for another 10 days to two weeks. I'm like, okay. So I went with two friends to see Oprah when she was in DC, Oprah's Live Your Left, uh, Best Life. And both my friends and I, the three of us were <laughs> abuse victims. So we go up there and we're sitting in, in the uh, that big Staples Center, Verizon Center, among 6,000 people. My phone vibrates and it's Kelly from Fox. He says, your piece is so good, it's going to air today. So instantly, I had a little meltdown because I thought, what if my husband sees it? He's going to be upset about what I said, which is so not true because, you know, he adores me. But I was worried, so worried about what he would think that I shared this horrible thing with, with everybody. So on the way home, I was a nervous wreck. So I come home and I said, Ed, did you watch Fox News yesterday? And he said, no, why? And I started to cry. And I told him what I did. I said, you know, I said on national TV that I was an abuse victim. He said, well, let's watch it. We watched it together. 
He put his arm around me and he said, honey, he said, you have opened the door. God has opened the door for you to save a multitude of children. First time since I was abused, total freedom, total freedom. Now I can ask for money. I can go speak about what happened to me. I feel, I feel newly empowered. It is so important. And I had a smile on my face because when you shared this with me and you said how Fox got it out of you, but look, look at God, look at how he used that. And it was the time for it. As you said, you believe in timing. It was the time for it. So you didn't carry any negativity regarding that. It was a blessing to you. Yeah, but I'm an old girl. I wish it would have happened a little bit sooner. Absolutely. But so you know what? Far ahead. With but, your organization, it will happen sooner for children. And that's how God is, is using you to do that. It will happen because they're going to speak up. Yeah. And it won't be a lifelong secret. There are some myths. And, and I thought some of these were true regarding sexual abuse. You know, we might say, oh, he looks normal and acts normal. So he can't be a child molester. As we know, it doesn't go by looks. Another myth is only men sexually abuse children. Although they may be in the majority, or they are, women do as well. Another myth, as I mentioned earlier, is stranger danger. Per the U.S. Department of Justice, 90% of child sexual abuse victims, as I stated, know their perpetrator. So when it comes to also not speaking up, when the child finally speaks up and tells their parents, do you find that the parent does not want to prosecute or say anything because it is a relative or a friend or maybe even a, a, a tight business associate. It, it uh, Yeah, that does happen. And, um, and women do not want to see their provider go to jail. And a lot of women don't want to believe it. A lot of women know what's going on and participate. You'd be amazed. I call it the silent epidemic. And, uh, and I think that the younger the child is that learns about this issue, the less chance of that child being sexually abused. So that's why eventually our show has to get back out there. Our books need to get out there. Our Simon dolls need to get out there. And incidentally, my second book is just about ready to be published. Simon says, be mentally fit. And that discusses self-esteem, bullying, and feeling depression. And those are three issues that are very close to sexual abuse. And then the third book is 50% done. Simon says, be cyber safe. And I'm, wor I'm working with a special agent from the FBI and a Commonwealth attorney because children need to be safe on the internet. Absolutely. And that'll be my three volume set that I hope will change, you know, the silent epidemic and that parents will have the discussion with their children and we can stop this once and for all. Absolutely. And as I mentioned to you, I, I like to stay abreast of all trailblazers, girlfriend T trailblazers. So I want to know when that book is released so that I can share the information and, and, and participate, be a part and avenue of awareness for stop abuse. What should parents tell their children, Regina, about their private parts? I think they should tell them that their your private parts are your own and nobody can touch them. If you feel that somebody is touching them inappropriately, you need to tell me. I will believe you. Do not be afraid. Um, say a loud and resounding no and, uh, and just have that conversation. Ask them questions. It's so important to have those discussions with your kids. I, you know, I, I can't say that enough it's it's just it's the most important thing and that they would be, kids need to know that they can tell you anything you know i have four children and eight grandchildren and uh, they're all the most adorable people in the world of course and uh and i've always from the time they were very little said to them you can tell us anything i won't judge you you know i will believe you and we can talk about it and that's the most important thing Yes, yes, that communication and, and receiving it. What signs should parents look for regarding child sexual abuse? If the child uh, touches themselves or others inappropriately, 
I think if their moods change, if they sleep too much, if they don't want to go to school, if you have a family member that they don't want to be around. I mean, it's a matter of being aware of your child's normal actions. And if any of those change, you would want to know why. Regarding uh, a family deciding to prosecute, what support system is provided to the child and their family? Well, Child Protective Services, you know, are very supportive. The police also usually have a liaison officer um, and, and you have your friends. I mean, it's, there, there is a big support system. There really is. CASA is wonderful. The court appointed special advocates, um, you know, and there, there's also uh, other organizations like RAIN and, you know, go, go on the internet and, and really take a look and get some of the facts and stats and, and, you know, what it is you could do. There's an enormous amount of information on the internet. Well, your program has a direct impact on the lives of vulnerable children. And I'm going to share a quote from your actual website that says, the next day I told my school teacher my story. This eventually led to my perpetrator's conviction. He was sentenced to two life sentences plus 40 years. What an impact. And I salute you as well as those who are in this meeting in the Zoom team room and on Facebook for your passion and your compassion to stop child sexual abuse. Now we're going to interact with first, initially with those on Facebook. So Tamika will share some questions or comments, but if you have a comment, you can speak on that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity and to meet all these wonderful people. So my heart is full. Thank you, love. Oh, you're so very welcome. And I want to share with everyone that I met Regina by way of Vanessa Torres. I was on the HRDIC, Hampton Roads Diversity and Inclusion Consortium. I was on the board and we hosted an event at a hotel. And I just, I, and Regina, I just ran into you and you were telling me about Simon. And at that time you were gonna have some big event that you couldn't really share with me that was gonna be VIP only, but you had Simon and I asked for him and I have kept him ever <laughs> since. I have, I, he's just so adorable. Who will want to get rid of this doll? So before Tamika gives <laughs> questions and comments, I just wanna remind everyone that Simon, now is this on the website? I didn't see on the website how to purchase Simon. Um, yes, he is. He's $15 on the website and the okay. books are $14 for the soft cover and $20 for the hard cover. Okay. I remember now. I just clicked on the donate button. That's why I didn't see right. the, the, your shop where you have Simon. So right. please everyone get involved with the fight to help. It's such a wonderful and creative way for a very serious and heinous uh, act. And so we appreciate you for just keeping it light for the children so that they're not weighed down by it, but they can have some fun with it while they tell their parents, because that's important for kids because we don't want them weighed down. They can't carry the weight of an adult. So Tamika, if you have any comments, you can share and we'll take about three questions from Facebook. And for those in the Zoom tea room, I'm ready for your questions where you'll be unmuted and we'll start your video so you can talk to Regina. Good morning. So first off, just want to say that there are lots and lots of comments of everyone just saying thank you just for being so passionate, for caring about the children, and for just pushing this out because this is one of those topics that's often not spoken of. So we do have a question from Ms. Uh, Michelle, um, Nurse Jackson, who's asking about whether or not um, this is actually used in like the guidance departments for public schools or how can that be uh, put out there? Um, I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question uh, for as far as guidance counselors are concerned though. We do have a book uh, that is a read aloud an activity book that we leave with every school for the guidance counselors and teachers. Uh, it's for grades one through five, their activities to reinforce what the children have just learned for the show. Does that answer your question or did I not get I think get it? so. Okay. I think so. And uh, then we also do an evaluation of the program afterwards so that we can measure the impact that it's having. 
That is amazing. Thank you so much. We have another question from Cheryl Ward um, Kirkland, who's asking, does this mean that men and women who are abusing children, were they also abused, which led them to abuse uh, children? Not necessarily, but it is a learned behavior. So I would think, and I'm not, I'm not a professional. I've just been around kids and doing this for 40 years. But um, I, I think that probably if you were abused, you might have the inkling to do it as well. But I know too many people who were abused who aren't abusers. So I, I, don't, I don't think that's really true. Thank you. We have another question from um, Denise Martin, and she's asking, how are you able to overcome the pain and trauma of the life-changing event to the point you are right now able to speak about it? Well, um, you know, I, I was born in Germany, the youngest of six children, and we came, and this is going to give my age away, we came to New York via the Berlin Airlift, one of the first families. So uh, uh, my mother and then my dad left. So my mother actually brought up six children by herself. We learned strength. We learned to trust ourselves. We learned to trust our instincts. So I think a lot has to do with my upbringing, but I think more has to do with the fact that I really think that God has put me on this earth to serve children. So I entertain them. I teach them. I love them. So, you know, that's me as a puppeteer. How lucky am I, how blessed am I that I found something that I not only enjoy, but that can really make a huge difference. Thank you. We have Ms. Cheryl Wolf who has a comment and she just wanted to say, you are a living, like a testimony. God is working through you. And she just wants to thank you for- Without a doing. doubt, thank you. Thank God. Amen. Also have a comment from Cheryl Wolf again saying that she is praying that the windows of heaven open up and shower down blessings to your amazing goal here and the ministry that you are involved in. Um, now, Ms. Uh, Michelle Nurse Jackson also has a comment that, that question is, it would be great if there were professional um, development courses for teachers, church leaders, and a professional to be able to uh, recognize the signs and report a suspicions. Okay, so um, one of my board members, his name is Charles Lynn Hightower. He was with, um, he, he was a cop for 40 some odd years. He is a certified facilitator for darkness to light, which is an amazing, amazing uh, program that tells you everything you need to know about sexual abuse. And uh, it's brilliant. And we're actually, Stop Abuse is hosting one on August 26th. I don't know yet exactly where the location is, but I will let, I will let you know, Sabrina, so you yes. can get it out. But it's something that everybody should watch. It's marvelous. It is the, it is the best tool to learn about this issue. Excellent. Well, that completes our questions. And there are several comments. And Regina, you're a member of Girlfriends T, so you're welcome at the end of this interview to go down and maybe put a comment thanking everyone. But what we're going to do now, everyone, is we're going to uh, mute ourselves. And Regina, of course, I want to thank you, but I'm going to officially thank you when the girlfriends join us. So everyone, you can start your video and you can unmute and I will help with that. Thank you, Miss Regina. Thank, Thank you. you, love. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Regina. Awesome, awesome. Great content, great information. Thank you, Regina. Awesome. Really happy to be here with you. Yes. Yeah. I will very informative. Yeah. Very. Yeah. Thank you very much, Regina. You're such a blessing. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, Regina. I enjoyed the conversation. Yes, this is, I mean, you've been a hero out there. You're one of those silent heroes that we don't hear about, and we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yeah.
Okay, I think we have everybody who wants to be on. I've asked you to start your video because we want to make sure. Now, the purpose of this, Regina, is that we want you to know that we support you. We're girlfriends. So girlfriends support one another. So in the beginning, we surround you and you walk through the blazing trail of this interview <laughs> very successfully. And now we're going to roast you because we want to thank you again for joining us and for being our girlfriend's tea for a day. And how do we roast them, ladies? You are now my girlfriend. Can I say something to me, Regina? Yes, go ahead. Um, I'm in tears right now because, because I have carried my um assaults with me for years. Not even my family knows. And I just want to thank y'all and thank Gerald for inviting me to this because I did not, I thought I would carry that with my, with me to my grave. And um, I can, I know um, I was, the first one was when I was like nine years old. And um, it was a friend that my um, next door neighbor to my granny and um, and only one other person was there when he was trying to assault me, trying to bang on the door to get in. And um, when my granny got there, um, it alerted him and he ran out the back. But um, I had to live with that. I, nobody in my family knows. Just a select few of my friends. And um, the second one was someone else um, when I was a little bit older. And um, only one friend um, knows about that one. And um, I just, you know, I've lived with it. And I've, you know, just survived with it. But um, I just want to thank y'all for sharing this with me. Yes. Can I just make a comment, please? I would love to get together with you. I would love to invite any of you to come to my studio on first on, on South First Colonial Road. But especially, I would love to get together with you. I want to give you a Simon doll and a hug with a mask on. Uh, but I would love to talk to you, please. Yes, yes. Michelle, amen. amen. Yes, yes. We're standing, number, with you. We're standing with you. Go ahead, Regina. Can you give her my phone number? I would definitely. I know she was invited by Gerald, and I'll send your number to Gerald. Please. And Michelle, I'm going to pray. We're going to pray with you. Yes, yes. Please. We're going to yes. cover you in prayer right now. Come on, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord. Thank you, God. We thank you for your divine yes. appointment, Lord God. Yes. But not yes. just Michelle, but there are others, Lord God, who yes. should yes. remain silent, Lord God. And that is their prerogative for now. Father God, we thank you for Michelle's testimony. We thank you yes. for everyone who is carrying that burden, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thriving, as Regina stated, mm -hmm. thriving mm -hmm. you. And I pray in the name of Jesus that in you the bless them Jesus. so that they will know that they are not alone. Yes, Lord. They are not alone. There Thank are a lot you. of silence. There are a lot of silent people, but they are not alone. And you mm -hmm. are with them. And I thank you, Lord God, as you guide them, as you guide them, Lord God, to the right people, the right associates, and ultimately to the Holy Spirit who comforts. We thank, thank you for this day because it is our heartfelt desire that lives will be changed. Yes. Hallelujah. Those will be broken, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of we Jesus. count it done in Jesus' name. Thank Amen. You, Amen. Amen. And Michelle, Michelle, this was your first step toward huge strength. So mm -hmm. God love you and you will be fine. Okay? Call me. I'd love to talk to you. Thank you so much. And thank you, girlfriends, yes. all the girlfriends yes. in the Zoom team. Hallelujah. All right. And we have a whole new set of girlfriends. Yes, a whole new set. Absolutely. 
God bless you amazing, all. Amazing. Amazing. Wow. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. More. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Sabrina. You're very Appreciate welcome. You. Love. Love you more. All right. Love all you right. guys. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Be safe. Informative show. Enjoyed the show. Very good. Thank you.